Well, hello, everybody. Um, we're going to get started here in, in a moment. Just going to let everybody, a couple more, another probably 30 seconds for some people to join in. It's right at 10 o'clock right now. Uh, and uh, about three more seconds, we'll get, uh, we'll get rolling here. Hope everybody's having a great day so far. The weather here in Chicago is definitely um, perking up. Um, and out in the East Coast, I know as well. And Exciting times. I love spring. Up here in Dallas, too, uh, where the box, well, I should say down here in Dallas, where the box office is, um, it is rainy and 50s. So, you know, everybody's everybody's inside, everybody's work. I always feel uh, feel better about doing you know webinars and working in front of a computer on days like today because I can't be outside. I'm, I'm not sure why I'm coming down that way today, Ellie. I mean, geez, it's going to be <laughs> but it's worse down there. That's not what I signed up for. I know. All right. Um, Might be a little warmer than where you are, but probably. Yeah, <laughs> it's warmer. All right, I guess we'll get started here. Um, so uh, welcome everybody. This is the April 2024 edition of the Box Monthly Webinar. Today, um, as you can see in the title right there on the screen, Energy Market Update and how to source your next big deal. A couple of things, one is we have the handout available in the, uh, the PDF. Um, PDF handout is available in the I don't know what you'd call that, <laughs> the, the, the webinar um, screen thing there. Um, as well as we also can ask, ask questions. If you have any questions during, during, the, uh, during the call, we'll answer those at the end of the, end of the thing. Um, and also, even after the webinar, uh, this will be going back on, going on the YouTube. You'll, you'll probably see a uh, thing on this. And also the PDF will be there as well. And if you have any additional questions, just feel free to send them over to your account executive. Uh, so with that, we will get started here. Um, and uh, again, my name is Scott Evelyn. I'm Director of Pricing and Strategic Solutions here. And Allie is, is the manager of, of the desk here. Um, and uh, we have been doing this now for, I think it's the going on year two here, next month, I believe. So um, and really, really enjoy these and uh, hopefully bring some value to everybody. Um, so today we're going to talk about a little bit about Box, as always, um, and then a market update. Um, some interesting things I'll be showing there, and then how to source your next big deal. And this is going to go into a lot of great tips on how to win the deals, how to um, prospect for them, some tips on sources to kind of really help you out there. Um, so we're looking forward to this. So let's get started here, and Allie, take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. So we are really excited about our April webinar today, you guys. Um, we have some great stuff for you today. Looking forward to Scott's market update, but uh, we want to pause and introduce ourselves for anybody who doesn't already work with Box, or maybe you're a little bit new to Box, or maybe you've just never tuned into one of these webinars before. Broker Online Exchange uh, has become the largest network of energy agents, brokers, and consulting firms in North America. We provide independent energy brokers and affiliates with access to all top electricity and natural gas retailers, instant pricing, and cutting edge software, all supported by industry experts. So our uh, primary uh, focus is connecting a variety of diverse energy partners so each can benefit from streamlined efficient options in deregulated natural gas and electricity. You can see how you can scale your energy business nationally with our deregulated energy map which is up on the screen now. You'll see markets where we have uh, natural gas options only available in green, options where we have both natural gas and power options available in blue, and then we'll have limited availability. You'll see a lot of states through the Midwest and then out west are marked with kind of this dark gray color. Uh, the, the United States is deregulated nationally for natural gas. So if a customer is big enough, even if they're in one of these areas where maybe the state doesn't have a choice program to help smaller and medium business customers or residential customers, large customers are still able to shop if they're big enough. And there are often volume restrictions or rate class restrictions in that space. Um, but we're always happy to review a bill copy. We do have suppliers who are able to uh, manage opportunities for the right customer in each of these states. So if you have customers where maybe they have a location out there that we haven't worked on yet, it's definitely worth taking a look. We're always happy to review a bill copy. 
another advantage of working with Box is our uh, plentiful and diverse uh, supplier um, portfolio here. I wanted to say selection, it's not the right word. Um, we work with a lot of the top brands in the space. So Direct Energy or the NRG Group, uh, Champion Energy Services, NG Constellation, a lot of the names from bigger national retailers that you guys know and love. And then we also have a fair amount of uh, niche energy suppliers that maybe only serve a couple markets or a couple uh, independent system operators, but they're providing a competitive advantage in terms of their niche expertise. They know these markets really, really well. Uh, one of the companies actually that I wanted to shout out that is not on this sheet yet, we need to make sure that they are on that sheet, uh, is approved energy those guys have been killing it in the mid-atlantic area so uh, we've been running a ton of business with those guys lately apg and e is another one they are on the sheet but um, we're able to make recommendations just the scope of business that we have access to the number of suppliers that we have bidding on that business uh, the type of strategies and customizations that are available through this network are really really fast so we are here to help make recommendations as far as those options go. We are always happy to make a recommendation as far as the supplier goes, the, um, the product, whatever it is that you're dealing with, we have options to help. And the last piece that we want to go over here, just in terms of our intro, um, is our strategic solutions team. That's got myself and uh, other members of our pricing desk. We are really here to allow every partner to become a full service consultant. And we offer all of these services with a huge team to support you. I often tell people at conferences that one of my very favorite things about working at Vox is the fact that we have a really deep bench. So if uh, people like myself or Scott are stepping out to go meet with a customer, we have a really deep bench that still runs our business, that supports our business, that has just as good relationships with all of our suppliers, knows our systems and all of these possibilities equally as well. We're here to offer strategic procurement solutions, whether that's a customized strategy. We have a utility data box platform that specializes in usage analytics, budget reporting, utility bill management, all of those types of pieces. So your customer has everything in one place, regardless of how many accounts they have under as many different utilities. Um, we provide contract analysis and negotiation for every single one of our customers. Uh, these contracts are often written to benefit the energy suppliers. So we make sure that the customers are, uh, are set up fairly um, and we're here to assist with any, um, you know, any changes to the contract or product over the term. Um, many of our staff, our executive management uh, has built and, uh, and written supplier contracts. So pricing optimization, contract analysis is something where we're really, really strong. We provide sustainability strategy consulting and benchmarking work in addition to RFP management and execution. And we'll get a little bit more, we'll touch on RFP management a little bit more uh, later as we get into kind of the large customers and sourcing these really big deals. But Again, all of these services are available to you if you have the right customer, if you guys are interested in, um, in customers that are in that 5 million kilowatt hour a year and up. We're gonna talk a little bit about sourcing those deals, supporting those deals, but remember that we have this product street suites behind us. Remember that we have uh, personnel resources that are always available to talk and to have these conversations with you, to coach you, to make sure that you're looking like a rock star whenever you go into these meetings with your customers and that your customers are set up to have these conversations with whichever stakeholders they need to so that everybody understands the products, understands the next steps. They know that they have a trusted, knowledgeable, experienced energy partner who is going to hold their hand every step of the way. We are absolutely here for all of it. And we've really built out this product street suite just to support that. Um, so with that, I think that's a good intro uh, to Broker Online Exchange and to what we do here. And I will pass it back to Scott for our market update. Uh, thank, thank you, Allie. Um, and Allie will be talking a little bit later on about how to win these big deals. Um, so let's start out with the market update. Uh, I want to show this, I want to show this slide one more time here. Um, uh, this is a, um, a map here showing really what, how much natural gas generation is of the generation of the capacity in each of these, um, each of these ISOs. 
uh, is why natural gas matters. Why we talk about natural gas a lot when we're talking about power because it is the single most biggest thing that the single most biggest um, attribute to the to the price of, of electricity. Because as natural gas is the fuel for really the marginal electricity that's being used, and it's going to set the price most of the time. Really about 85, 90 percent of the time is setting the price of of, of power, uh, depending on the region. Um, so there's that, let's go right into energy market price update. And here we are, we got the markets and look at these, this is really interesting because gas just moved up in, in nickel, six cents, seven cents and 25, 26, 27. And uh, the power really jumped, um, not as much in ERCOT, but definitely much bigger here in, in PGM and and uh, Comed, Nepal, uh, huge huge jumps, um, and with that, that reason why the main reason why is as we've seen here. And oh, first I want to show you this. This is interesting here. Uh, PGM power versus natural gas. So the five-year historical gas. That's a five-year cash gas price has been 348 for Henry Hub. 2025 gas is 347. So these things are relatively equal. It's, it's you know 0.29% lower for 25, 25 gas. But power, five-year PGM historical, 3878. So that compares to the 348. That that's what the gas, you know, blah blah. blah that's what we use is 348, but now 3878. Now 2025 PGM is 49.93. So same gas price, but power is 11 bucks higher, or roughly around 28%, 29% higher. So um very very interesting there and with that one of the main reasons why we've had these huge moves here this year in power really about a five or six dollar five or six or seven dollar move and since the beginning of the year is all this buzz here power demand growth is all the buzz demand growth creates new challenges in the power industry these are all the headlines that have been going on um let's go back to that screen that have been we've been seeing out there uh and really um you know, that, that's it's, it's just extremely interesting. We got definitely a huge growth in PGM that's been planned as a planning year thing. But, you know, one of the things I like to say, and this is something that you won't see anywhere else, I kind of was digging into NVIDIA's um, latest announcements of some of their technology coming up, but they have a chip that's coming out that's 25 less cost energy consumption than its prices. So um, with that, you know, this 25 less cost energy consumption. This just came out um, three weeks, two, three weeks ago. Um, are things just gonna get more efficient? Will they become more efficient? Um, these are some questions. I mean, it totally could. And uh, this is a PGM forecast. I wanna show you this. This is one of the reasons why we we have started to have the move in January and it got picked up some more steam and why other ISOs are heat rates are expanding now. Um, but this is going to be an uh, extremely interesting story. This is the main story going on right now. Uh, I think it's overcooked a little bit, to be honest with you. But um, I could be completely wrong. That's why we do uh, discipline head strategies here, where I really highly recommend them for large customers. Uh, but going back to PGM index, uh, really, um, we have another month here in the low 20s um, in March. Really been a dull winter, especially February and March. Uh, last 12 months, 32.56. Five-year average, 3878, as you just talked about there a second ago. Um, and here's the forwards. They just keep moving out. Make brand new gas curves moved up too, but it's only like 30 cents higher for this 26 and 27. Yet, you know, that gas price at 30 cents higher would be about a two dollar move in power. So you know, 26, 27 is even more, more inflated, even more of this kind of risk price gain to the market. Um ERCOT, um, less so. Um, five year average 47.85. We had another one, like $13 or something like that last month. Uh, 54.71 last 12 months average. A lot of that's just because of this. You take this out, uh, we're in the 30s for the last 12 months. So um, it really is that big anomaly in August where we had, we had crazy weather last summer. It was like, uh, I think, record heat multiple days in a row. Uh, record, record, record load. I know that for a fact. Um, so that's just going there. Interesting stuff. Again, here's the, our forwards. Uh, definitely, can definitely in a uh, kind of backwarded market, um, which is um, a lot of it's just because of the solar coming on. Although there's some dynamics going on here. This is an interesting chart. Kind of like chart of the month I'm going to show here. Um, look at this as the winner last year. 
and look at the shape and now look at this, this is called a duck's back that's forming it's what's going on in california and what's going to happen is, is this area here power oops too many times this power here will be a little cheaper on an hourly basis and you're going to have these evening ramps they're going to get more expensive so there's some ways that you know if you're a one shift factory you shift your hours down lower in these areas and um you know you can uh, save money actually uh in the end but that's something that's going to be forming it's going to continue to form but the solar that's coming on that keeps coming on is going to really um is, is why we're having this backwardated uh backwardated curve um u.s storage um u.s gas storage um yeah look at this this is does it all this is the second highest we've had in storage um and at this time of year uh around 2300 um you know so probably five definitely probably create the five-year maximum the way things come out even in a slightly warmer than normal summer um so we're definitely well above and just to add a note to that as well uh european storage levels are at record highs so um there is a uh case being made that we could have uh you know um some lng uh market could, could the storage could fill up by august and by september we could have a um some lng imports that are getting cut here for for a time being for a few months so um yeah similar bearish sign there on that but there's a lot of bullish things going on here and we're gonna get into that in a second it's not weather weather is just boring right now uh, it doesn't really matter we could be slightly below, but we below, a bunch above, whatever. It's not really moving the needle here. It's perfect weather. It's windows are open most of the country, especially the population areas. And um, yeah, so no real gas, no real heat going on. Um, and uh, uh, this will be this way all month. So weather's just it's the one time of the year is we don't have to look at the weather too much. Um, and we only, again, we only like to look at the 10 to 15 day forecast here. This is what this is. Um, and uh, anything beyond that's really hard, hard to predict. Um, but that's what's going on there. LNG export growth, this is this continues. Uh, this is all still happening. All these projects here, we are gonna have almost a doubling in the next four years. Um, and yeah, so that's, this is going on. And the, the world is expanding as far as India, China, they're definitely building a lot of gas plants. Uh, so let's go to Asia, um, Europe as well. There's a lot of other, not just US though, building LNG stuff. So there's a possibility that not all this is always exported at all times, but it is getting built, it is export capacity. Uh, and it also now is starting to get some rumblings about reopening the permitting process for even more. Um, and uh, that's there. Producers are drilling less. We're down to the 110 now. We hit this last week, kind of starting to back on new lows here again. Um, so they're, they're drilling less uh, and they're also cutting production um we are now kind of hitting a well under 101 here in april so this continues to go lower uh we're going to be soon to be probably by summer we'll be making a deficit uh and this is just economics um you know no reason to be selling gas at the front of the market here in the, in the you know in this like two dollar area um for when um for gas, uh, just not, or sorry, not two dollars. It's the one dollar area, one one eighty, one ninety. Um, really, two fifty is what it costs. Really, the cost of production is two fifty. Best case, some places two twenty, two thirty. Um, no reason to cut to this. No reason to, to drill and send out some of these. Well, some of this gas production, not gas production. Some of a lot of the drills wells being drilled are just being um, capped um, for future inventory, which are, is going to be a buffer. And keep a ceiling on prices potentially as well uh, down the road. Um, lastly, um, I have a strategy. Uh, this is, I love this chart because this kind of shows where gas is next 12 months. That's 282. Uh, and um, this is a your reward for just waiting, and there's all your risk there. Um, remember, we were on these lows back in, uh, in 2020, uh, these kinds of kind of levels. Also in 16, we spiked up uh twice in those times um each of these down below as mentioned there was a spike um so it's saying in the commodity industry there's no cure for no better cure for low prices um uh not prices sorry 
let me get to mix it all up. Sorry, I'll come back to that one. <laughs> um, and uh, but anyway, just have a strategy. Um, be disciplined. Um, customers are not taking a long position; they're covering a short position. I like to, like to add. A lot of people always ask, "What's my advice in this?" I I, I really believe heavily that you know you're in a no no lose situation. You know, very very little risk of downside if you if you cover your gas needs now for the next three or four years. Um, where this market's at, I think it's a it's a decent opportunity because the fundamentals are kind of shaping taking place. Um, it's there. Power, I would definitely have more of a tiered head strategy, and that's my that's my market opinion there for the month. There we are. Okay, Ali, uh, take it away here. How to source your next big deal? Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. <clears throat> So we're going to talk a little bit about big deals. Uh, we have got several requests uh, over the last webinars. So if, if you guys have ideas for future webinars, by the way, there's a little uh, box that pops up and ask for some feedback after the webinar. If you guys have some comments, uh, questions, concerns, anything that you guys want us to focus on next time, it's a great place to plug it in. Uh, we uh, all of us read those together, so uh, definitely a good a good resource. Um, and we were requested to talk some about big deals. So the first thing that I wanted to highlight is just that across our portfolio, some of you guys probably understand this, but I was really curious just in terms of how much bigger deals were moving the needle, were showing up across our portfolio, uh, were showing up in our revenue. I think everybody knows that the bigger the deal, um, the obviously the more revenue it will produce, but just what is that difference and what do those ratios look like? So I put together a couple charts um, and without talking about necessarily any dollar numbers, this is an overview of the box portfolio uh, from 2023. So you can see that uh, about 10% of our total contracts that we closed were custom versus 90% that were matrix. That number is actually nine point something, it's rounding up to 10, but you can see that just under 10% of our total contracts closed were custom deals. That 10% contributed 53% of our total percentage revenue. So those 10% of the contracts that were submitted accounted for more than half of Box's overall revenue last year. So, and you'll see the, the other half is, uh, is, is just that matrix piece. But 90% of all of the agreements that were signed only equated to 47% of our revenue. So I thought those numbers were really interesting. We are definitely focusing on custom business. One of the reasons why we've built out and focused on the strategic solutions suite of services is so that we can better support these big deals, these custom deals, because they move the needle not only for us, but obviously they move the needle for you guys. So it's work, these big deals often have much longer deal cycles. They can, be, um, they can be a little bit tougher just in terms of the requirements, the processes that go with them, in terms of uh, you know, coordinating between multiple stakeholders versus just one owner, one stakeholder of the business. But oftentimes they're really worth that investment. You get one of these customers um, and keep them under contract for a decade. Remember, everybody needs power, everybody needs natural gas. If you can put the work in to not only win the deal, but ensure that the customer stays sticky throughout their contract term, that customer can generate revenue into well into the future. So just so you guys know, I wanted to take a look kind of at the overall portfolio, take a look at some numbers in terms of how much these bigger deals really do uh, contribute uh, to the overall wellness of the business, um, ours and yours. So just so you guys know, this is what it looks like and we can really make a big deal, a uh, big difference with these bigger deals. So getting into it a little bit more for anybody who maybe hasn't sourced a big deal before, has never worked on one, um, or maybe you're currently in the door-to-door -door space and want to get a little bit more into uh, generating and calling on leads, getting into these larger spaces, um, these are all some good verticals um, that, to focus on for those larger deals. 
So commercial real estate firms often uh, need somebody to help manage their electricity and natural gas needs. These guys are usually high transaction entities. So they are buying properties and putting them under their management portfolios or they're selling properties to somebody else for them to manage. Oftentimes their needs will change throughout the contract term. That's something where we can really help. We can make sure that the contracts are set up with a certain percentage add delete, or it's something where we can actively manage the portfolio via a managed head strategy. Those uh, types of products often perform very, very well, not only for commercial real estate, but for everybody on this, uh, on this slide. Obviously, you guys know data centers in crypto, at least until they become more efficient, like Scott mentioned. Uh, data centers in crypto are huge energy users. They have great flat load that everybody wants to get their hands on, um, but their needs can be complex, specifically from a credit and collateral standpoint. Uh, they, these guys have uniquely flexible load that allows them to participate in demand response and price response, those are also things that we can help with. Again, stuff to make these customers more sticky, not just helping them with their energy needs, but helping them to solve a problem whenever they're actually dealing with uh, their portfolio, their overhead, their operational costs, all of those things. Again, we're here to hold hands with them and walk step by step through. Manufacturing and industrial, again, another big vertical where we can focus, um, we can look at the specific needs of that manufacturer, uh, look at their production schedule, look at what they've done over the last three to five years and come up with a great baseline for them that, that can then be adjusted based on their planned production schedule, whether they're uh, scaling down, ramping up, they've decided that they're going to, um, you know, add a new facility that'll be a about half the size of the existing facility and it's going to be right next door any of those types of things or again if these guys are interested in some efficiency measures interested in demand response these are also good customers there just depending on what level of flexibility they have with their operation the two below are uh, also different they have uh, different needs and more complex needs perhaps than the commercial energy data centers in manufacturing and industrial space Franchises and chains can be an awesome opportunity for energy consultants. Most of the time, these franchises and chains uh, are owned by an individual who ma uh, is managing procurement, not only for energy, but also for all of their food, all of their uh, service needs. They're managing materials. Uh, they're managing a whole, whole lot. And franchises and chains are usually smaller businesses. So we can really show up and bring our energy expertise to the forefront here, help them manage their needs throughout their contract terms, help them keep track of all of their accounts and their contract statuses, help them design a product that will support them over the next, you know, two, five, ten years as their business grows and change, uh, changes. That's something we can definitely help with. And don't forget about Utility Data Box, our utility bill management and uh, invoicing and reporting software that piece can really really help with any of these guys but especially with franchises and chains if you're dealing with somebody who has you know 100 different locations being able to put all of that onto one platform uh, can be a value add that is a deal maker in and of itself and then i wanted to touch on the education and healthcare space. Uh, sometimes we call this mush, uh, municipalities, university schools, and hospitals, healthcare. Education and healthcare, anything in the public space can be a little bit different from a process perspective. Oftentimes these guys uh, have a bidding process that is a lot more formal, RFPs or RFB processes that are set up to ensure fair vendor selection, competitive pricing, um, and just make sure that all of the process is totally on the up and up. So education and healthcare is a great space for us. We can actually help customers to put those processes together. We can help them consult on product, then go out to market for them and help them vet suppliers, help them make sure that all of the bids that they receive for the product we designed uh, are accurate, are apples to apples. Make sure that those contract terms are uh, also being optimized for them, that their pricing is being optimized for them. A lot of these guys in education and healthcare
care, they're managing their own RFPs or RFPs. And the big opportunity for us as, an, as energy consultants is to sit right next to the customer and advise them. Make sure that whenever they're reading these contracts, whenever they're putting together all of this paperwork, that they're requesting the right things, they're requesting the right consideration, um, and that they're getting everything, that they really have all of the boxes checked. And again, all of those pricing options, contract terms are apples to apples, so that whenever they're making a decision, they understand how that product and how that contract will perform over the term. So just a few ideas as far as target verticals. Um, and then I wanted to bring up a slide that we actually talked about last year, some do's and don'ts. So be sure to do take a consultative uh, team approach. We'll go over the difference between just an energy broker and an energy consultant here on the next slide. Um, but be sure you do understand the customer's pain points and risk tolerance. Uh, a manufacturing facility might have an extremely high risk tolerance. They might be willing to float a little bit more of their load because they have the backbone to take on a month where energy prices spike if it's one of the 18 months that they're under contract. Versus a school or hospital, somebody who's setting their budgets for uh, years, you know, for months or years in advance or working off a specific schedule may have um, a particular may need a fully fixed number for their budgets. They may need that number to absolutely not move at all. Or the customer's pain point might not even be related to their cost. It might be related to utility bill management or to the fact that they have an additional stakeholder who has come on and put some ESG goals in place that they have no idea how to tackle. Understanding your customer's pain points and risk tolerance is absolutely key, to, especially when you're working these larger deals, making sure that you're not just assisting your customer with getting the best price on the market, but you're also assisting them with solving a tangible problem. That will keep them glued to you over the longer term. Again, do collect as much data as possible. Be thorough. Talk with them about whether they have been on the utility default rate and why that might be. Let's look at bill copies, not only the last couple months worth of bill copies, but as much data as you can so that we can get a good picture of how this customer has been managing their costs, what type of product they might have been on, um, and inform us a little bit about where the opportunities might be for us to help them do that better. And do use your strategic solutions team. This is really truly what Scott and I love to do, and our strategic solutions team is available and happy to help with any of these conversations with any of the customers, whether that's kind of a more general coaching, let's look at how strategic solutions works, or whether it's customer specific, hopping on with a customer, going down, you know, going down to a customer's location and meeting with them in person. Depending on the deal, we are absolutely here for it. We're here to support it. And a few don'ts. Don't offer only one product. Do not offer just fixed all in across all across standard terms, unless that's what the customer has really demanded and said, hey, I, I understand that you can do more, but this is what I really want. Even then, it's to your benefit to be able to flex a little bit and to show, hey, we can do this, we can deliver 100% of what you asked for, but just in case you didn't know, here is a bunch of other stuff that we can take care of for you too. There's a lot of other options out there. And whenever you're ready, Mr. Customer, we're happy to walk you through them. We're happy to show you what advantages or maybe disadvantages come with each of them with respect to your business specifically. Don't promise savings. Don't forget to set expectations. And don't forget to be an individual. Make sure that you're bringing your personality into these conversations. It's going to make somebody. It's going to make somebody remember you. Uh, people buy from people that they like in general. And if you're not bringing uh, your personality to these conversations, if you're not being genuine if, in your interactions, uh, if you're not giving any, if you're you know kind of playing it safe and, and close to the best, then it's easy for people to feel like maybe they don't know who they're buying from and if people buy from people that they like trust me being an individual being genuine show you know showing up 110 percent to the meeting being organized prepared and talking them through the value that you can provide as their energy consultant will make you unforgettable so getting a little bit more into consultant pieces i'll pass it back to scott here a little bit um, we really want to, to go into the differences between energy brokers and energy consultants. 
energy consultants manage so much more and are able to provide their customers so much more value because we attack a whole bunch of different pieces for the customer. You can see here we've broken it out into whether or not a supplier, a broker, and, a cons and or a consultant can manage any of these needs. And from our perspective, we believe that every single business has these needs, especially these larger customers that are larger users uh, who either have been around for a while or even if they're setting up a new shop, they need to review their business needs. They need strategy development. They need pricing optimization and contract negotiation. So by becoming a full and full scale energy consultant, not just a broker who goes out and finds the best bid, uh, finds the best fixed all in bid on any given day, but somebody who provides a full suite of products and services in order to support these larger deals is really, really important. So I want you guys to look at this, make sure that you guys are taking notes on not only can we get you the best cost, but we can do all of these other things that have tangible benefits for your business as well. Scott, is there some uh, some of this you wanted to speak to too? Yeah, yeah, please. Thank, thank you, Ellie. Um, so really uh, this slide in here, um, Feel free to pull this out, use it for your meetings. What I really want to stress here is that to get the big deals, to talk to these customers, they don't need a broker, they need a consultant. A broker is all about price, it's just price. You're just, a broker is like, I'm going to get you a, a price, I'm going to get you some deal, da, da, da. Well, speaking, you know, they should be able to do that themselves if they want to. Uh, they get calls from suppliers all the time. A consultant delivers that further value. So don't introduce yourself as a broker to them. Introduce yourself as a consultant. Um, we actually have sample emails you can use, all that stuff. Just talk to your account executive. I'll get those out to you. Um, but this is it's this really important. You're a consultant, not a broker. Just keep drilling that in your head when you're talking to these larger customers. They don't need a broker. They need a consultant. They need someone to help them, help them with all these things, the confusing roles, the never-changing roles, sustainability roles coming down their throat, all these things. They, they don't understand that there's differences in contracts. We need to explain that to them. And, and that's where it's, it's really important. I think, I think it's important, really important as well, to, to understand that, you know, really, you're not selling energy here you're selling a service, you're helping somebody make a decision that's gonna help themselves in the company. Um, so feel like, if you feel like when you come into work, it's much easier to do this and much easier to make these very hard, it's difficult, to just step out of your comfort zone, make these calls and these emails and these meetings and reduce this, uh, but that's how you get it. That, that's the risk you're putting out there to get the reward. And, but you gotta look at it more like you're on a mission and your mission is to really help these people. There's so many customers, I talk to them all, all the time, they don't understand what they're doing and they need help. They really need somebody to help them. We're here, we're here to back you up. Utilize your team as, as Ali just discussed, we're your team. The more people you have on a call, I've seen it all the time. It, it, the odds just keep increasing the more people you can have on a call with the customer. We, we're those people, we can be those people for you. If you're a one man shop, we can be those people for you. We do it all the time. We have a very high successful close rate utilize us there's absolutely no extra cost to just utilize us um next slide i just want to go over i i think it's important to keep working on the skills and um understanding that of uh, best ways to sell and i'm going to give a little plug out here to my guy alex ramosi um he is uh i know i know benji loves him too uh benji our our, pres our, uh, our vp uh and really here's a book 100 million dollar leads i'm gonna go into that in a second and secondly this part here this is podcast here this is um he's had multiple podcasts he has no own podcast but this one right here is the one of the ones that really sparked my interest in alex in the last just listen to the last 20 minutes last 23 minutes of this from the 50 minute mark on it is pure gold it is pure gold if you don't feel like you got something out of those 23 minutes, bill me your hourly rate. I'll pay it to check. Secondly, this book here, 100 million dollar leads, go and get it. In fact, next, the first 20 people, you write to your account executive, they send me first 20 people, I'll buy this book for you. Just give your address, your customer box, send it to your account executive, I'll buy this book for you because I feel confidently 
that this is going to help you out. My, my mission, that's what I look at, Ali. I think me and Ali both have the same thing here. Our mission is to help you out. I wake up every day, I feel like, how can I help people grow a successful business as an energy consultant and really take off their career? I, I love it. I love getting you guys, helping you guys close deals. And here I'm trying to help you guys here. So um, yeah, seriously, this book, I'll get it. Listen to these last 23 minutes um, of this podcast. Listen to the whole thing for that matter, or the whole story. But you know, listen to, if you only have 23 minutes, listen to those last 23 minutes of that. But that's really all, all I have here. Um, great stuff. Uh, really looking forward to working with all of you. Love, love meeting and talking with you. Keep it up. Uh, and see any questions we have out there. Um, I see one. Is there a recording available after this for this meeting? Yes. It'll be posted on YouTube and very shortly the next couple of days. Um, another question we yeah, have. Don't here, forget um, to check. Go ahead. Yeah, don't forget to check out a don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Broker Online Exchange is on YouTube. And like Scott said, we've been doing these webinars for almost two years now. So we will have this video uploaded there. Uh, I believe we'll get we'll send a link out to all of their registrants with uh, with a link to the recording as well. But if you guys are interested uh, in going back and seeing some of the things that uh, we've addressed in webinars past, we did a webinar on utility data box that uh, utility bill management and reporting software. Uh, we did we've done specific demos on that. We've done specific demos on commercial energy 101, uh, just all of the boxes to check. I think we've done a deregulation 101 for anybody who's uh, you know looking to take an educational approach in a new market, something like that. So great resources there. Make sure to check it out. Okay, excellent. We do have some more questions here. Um, uh, the states in gray are regulated, but you mentioned we can go after gas. Um, is that correct? No, yes, that is correct. Yes. Yeah. So for those gas markets, uh, I see another question about min minimums in those gas markets. For those markets, we are uh, we are looking for large commercial customers. So customers that are in those verticals that we discussed, really what we're looking for is probably uh, 50,000 decatherms or, or MCF. So about a half a million therms a year is something that's worth looking at. That's about the size threshold. And again, we can look at one large account or potentially, uh, you know, several accounts in aggregate could get there. Um, depending, uh, again, those states have different rules in terms of their eligibility. So it's both size and a customer, uh, for example, in Texas, a customer has to be rated as an industrial customer by the utility uh, rather than a commercial customer. Those are two different meter ratings. They mean two different things uh, to Atmos, the natural gas utility here. Industrial customers are allowed to shop and assuming that they meet the volumetric threshold, commercial customers are not, regardless of whether or not they meet that threshold. So depending on the market, depending on the rules, um, but like I said, for the right customer, we do have suppliers in each of those markets. So happy to review a bill copy, happy to review an opportunity and help you guys navigate that space. Good, good, good. Um, let's see, can you, have, can you give us some case studies? Yes, we're actually working on that. Um, give us some time on that. We're working on those case studies. Uh, and then one more question here. Uh, can we sell to government accounts? Um, I'll, I'll answer that, Ali. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's here, here's the thing. A lot of them will do RFPs. Um, your big federal ones, it's going to be uh, very tough um, to do the large government, large, large, large government ones, state, big giant cities. But with that, there is a ton of cities. I know for a fact the city I live in Evanston, it's a five megawatt load here. And they have a consultant that does the RFP. Unfortunately, it's not, I'm not involved in that, but they do have a consultant do the RFP. And, you know, so these, that's the market. That's where you go after them at is, is you, you tell them that you don't go in and tell them you're going to give them savings for that matter. That's not what they're looking for looking for somebody to run their RFP process for them. And we have the capabilities to do that. We have templates, we have all that. So go after those government accounts. And some of, them, some of these school districts, they, they'll just, you know, 
they'll just uh, need help sometimes. We, we've serviced some of those and not just your formal RFP process is done, but um, they get us meeting new government accounts, um, but be careful what you look for. Do not, please, um, one, one thing I wanna put out there too is if you receive an RFP, those RFPs are usually for suppliers. They're not for consultants. So that means somebody's already run an RFP. And so us putting pricing and then, you know, and doing all that, most of these suppliers won't do anything because they already receive them, especially these, the big ones, the big ones especially. So federal government RFPs, um, you, yeah, it's, it's public information. You can go get it, download it, and go price it if they want. But um, suppliers already price it if they want to um, without really having a consultant in between. So um, so a lot, lot more questions we're seeing come in here and we will try to get on all these and, and either Ali or myself will, uh, will definitely email back on these. So sorry about that. Great to have all the questions, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll get back to you, but we're looking forward to you next, talk to you next month. Again, if you need anything, just let us know. If you want a copy of that book, send it to your first 20 people, I'm gonna send it to you. Seriously, I'll send it right out to you. Um, just get, get your address over to your account executive and we'll, uh, we'll take care of you. Uh, great, uh, looking forward to a great month here with everybody. Take care, bye. Thanks guys.